Hello everyone, I am Dr. Sandeep Sharma, your Pediatric Super Speciality Faculty at Prep Platter. This video, I am going to talk about INI Super Speciality exam. It was held in the last week of April 2023 and I am not here to discuss the recall but I am going to discuss something more important than the recall. So you would ask sir, what is more important than recall? Analyzing from where the questions are being asked. If you have given the exam and you have not done reasonably well, you want to sit in the next exam after this, you need to listen to this video to just have an idea what are the areas from where questions are being asked and how you can modify your preparation. At the same time, if you are a resident just joined or going to join or currently doing your residency, MD or DNB in pediatrics, and you have the dream of doing your super speciality from AIMS, uh, PGI, JIPMER, all these lovely places, then again, you need to see because only when you see how the exam is being framed, from where the questions are being asked, you will prepare accordingly. So without wasting any time, let us start. One disclaimer before I start, this is entirely based upon recall. I am not talking about the actual questions. I am talking about the areas and what are my suggestions if you are targeting the future INI super speciality pediatric exam, right? I am talking about pediatrics. Now, talking about the general overview, you all know that the exam is uh, held in an MCQ oriented setting, there is a negative marking 1 by 3 and there are questions asked both from the general part as well as from the speciality part, right? And the speciality part traditionally has been a bit tougher. So what was the general overview of this INI super speciality pediatric part? I'm talking in general about most of the specialities included, like most of the, whether it was neonatology, pediatric oncology, etc. I'm talking in a general sense. So firstly, weightage of the questions and difficulty level was as per the previous INISS exams. So there was no significant can change from that. Secondly, how was it different from the usual NEET SS? It is a question I often get asked. Okay, sir, NEET SS, INISS, kya difference hai? About 6 to 7 MCQs related to biostatistics and community pediatrics was asked in INISS. Weightage of biostats, weightage of community health programs is not that great in NEET SS. This is one major difference. So if you are targeting INISS, you need to be thorough with the recent health programs, recent changes in the health programs, the recent themes and all these tests that you read in your, uh, when, when you were, you know, doing the literature review, when you were analyzing your data, all these tests which you did, all these bias based tests, these scatter diagrams, details of those you have to read. That is one major difference from NEET SS. NEET SS, biostats is not that important, INISS it is very important. Second, uh, general pediatrics this year, this exam was relatively easier compared to the past NEET SS. If you look at the NEET SS general pediatrics part and this INI SS general pediatrics part, you will find actually NEET SS is tougher, the general pediatrics part. When it comes to speciality, usually it is a reverse. So the speciality part is usually tougher in INI SS compared to NEET SS exam and very close options were present. And uh, ventilation questions were there. Ventilation questions are sometimes asked in NEET SS. If they are asked, it is a rare, rarity to be asked. They have been asked. I am not saying they are not asked, but NEET SS, the chances of being asked are less. In INISS, year after year, we see ventilation questions being asked, including on ventilator settings, including graphs and their interpretation. This is an area uh, many people miss out when they are targeting only NEET SS. INISS, you need to read it in addition. And there are few questions with multiple correct options. In NEET SS, there are no questions with multiple correct option. In INISS, you will have questions with multiple correct option. Don't worry, they will tell you that, uh, look at the options and tell the correct answer. Incorrect answer, A, B, C, D will be there and they will be mentioning 1, 2, 3 correct, 1, 2, 3, 4 correct, all correct, only 2 and 3 correct. This is how questions, options will be framed in that, right? So multiple correct options not found in NEET SS. So to summarize, NEET SS, INISS overlapping, preparation is same, but certain areas you need to prepare separately for INISS exam. And yes, this is one thing which we noticed this time that NEET SS has significantly more questions on poisonings and toxicology, pediatric obviously, uh, INISS very little questions are asked. In fact, the last two papers if you see, lesser and lesser questions are being asked. At the most, they, they would probably ask about uh, paracetamol, opioid and uh, you know snake venom poisoning but in NEET SS they will go into detail sometimes they will even ask about thylene glycol poisoning they will ask about the minor drugs which we may not even be using their poisonings also are asked so toxicology relatively more important in NEET SS exam now was the AIMS PICU protocol useful this time 
both the uh, it's not only PICU but AIMS neonatal protocols also. Yes, they were useful but a bit less compared to the previous INISS exam. This time there was a slight change in that. So there was a question asked on DK clinical management. If you have read, if you were thorough with the PICU protocol, you could have solved it. There was a question on dengue and renal replacement therapy question. Again, AIMS protocol would have been helpful. Uh, this is regarding to the newborn protocol. So newborn protocol, USC umbilical artery versus umbilical vein catheterization again covered in the AIMS pass protocols as well as AIMS publications. Uh, phototherapy, newborn uh, neonatal protocol if you have been through, uh, you would have been able to solve the question and case scenarios, uh, what next needs to be done or a particular uh, multiple parameters have been given, what is the appropriate management, these kind of questions, there was some help from the protocol. So you have to read the protocols, but unlike last previous few years, you cannot totally read the protocol and say, okay, I'm ready. Nelson has to be read and exams keep evolving, there, there is a slight change every year. Now breakdown of the areas, this is important. What are the expected areas from where questions were asked? What I mean by this is, we thought that the question will come and come. Now, whether you were able to solve or not, whether it was easy or tough, I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying is, we know questions are asked from these areas. If you are targeting INSS, they are predictable areas and from where questions were indeed asked. First, NRP. There were questions, two to three tricky questions were there. Uh, but NRP, we know that at least two questions are going to be asked. Even if you, if you are targeting DM neonatology, obviously there will be there. Even in other specialties, uh, you will have questions in general pediatrics from NRP. And this was the case here also. Phototherapy, there were two questions. Both of them were easy. Hearing screening. Now, hearing screening in newborn is something which has been asked consistently consistently every year in INISS exam. This is not a very high yielding topic for neat SS, but it is a very high yielding for INISS. So those targeting the November exam and 24 exam, hearing screening has to be read. Would I be putting an update on this? Yes, in the coming days, but not immediately and don't depend upon somebody else. You know something is going to be asked, be thorough with yourself. When I put a video, it will be a summary video, it will be a revision video for you. But be thorough with it. If something has been asked in the previous three exam, high likelihood of being asked again. X-ray questions were asked. So, duodenal literature, there was X-ray question. TTN, there was X-ray questions. Uh, HIV in infancy was expected area. We know every year it is going to be asked. Group management, you get a question wrong on group management, preparation is not good. It's as simple as that. I'll be honest, preparation was not. You're not kids, you're not all you know smart people, residents. All of you have managed group management. Even if after all this, you get the group management options wrong, there is something wrong in the preparation, you are not thorough with Nelson. The question which came, the options were, could have been easily ruled out based upon the clinical parameters given and the answer was in the explanation of Nelson. Pedigree chart was asked, every year the direct indirect questions are asked related to pedigree chart. So mitochondrial disorder I think it was and mitochondrial disease, which of the following is a mitochondrial disease or all of the following are mitochondrial disease except every alternate area in INISS you ask, you are asked questions related to this. So again, this time also there was a question on this. And every year there are three to four drugs. Now drugs are asked in INI SS as well as NEAT SS. Now which drug you cannot really predict. So there were a few atypical drugs, but drugs questions were asked. So mechanism of action, there was a monoclonal antibody asked and a specific side effect related statement based side effect question was also asked. And side effects of vaccines were asked. It was an easy question. AIMS uh, examiners are very fond of vaccines. There will be one or two questions on vaccines every year. Biostats questions were expected. You may not have been able to solve, that is a separate thing. And milestone question, relatively easy, quite easy question. Now, uh, what were the areas which were kindly atypical or tougher areas, I would say? You got it correct, excellent, but these are the things they are often missed when you are preparing specifically for INASS. So one was theme of World Health Day 2023. Uh, a typical thing. It, these, these things are like, you know, you're playing a, you're a bowler, you're a fast bowler, you bowl something, the batsman hits something with a full force in your hands and the catch comes towards you. If you have played cricket, you would relate. Sometimes the ball will just stick in your hand, other times it will just injure your finger and go to the boundary. So these questions are also like that. They will be like coming with full force, you had read somewhere, it stuck in your brain, you were able to mark. But you cannot specifically prepare for all these themes, days, etc. But again, INISS, uh, kuch extra, kuch different, you have to do. 
and there was a question on one publication bias also. Uh, there was a question related to ultrasound cranium. Uh, the complete recall is not there, but people said, sir, it was slightly tougher question. About five to six tough scenario questions. What next needs to be done? These are always tricky. Do you go for the best treatment? Do you go for an investigation wala option? Or you, do you go for management wala option? So this is where tricky questions are, come, uh, are coming. So INISS, this was kind of, you know, uh, difficult to predict in some of the cases, some of the questions. Then ventilation question was atypical. I'm not saying unexpected, but they were atypical. Uh, CPAP, there was a tricky kind of question, close option, somebody said. Opticochiasmatic arachnoiditis, either you know it, you have read somewhere, or you don't know at all. It is something you will not be revising close to the exam. You had read somewhere in some subject, you, you remembered, or you, there was a case somewhere, some discussion somewhere, some journal club, you were sleeping. I know most people are sleeping in journal clubs. I've been a resident. Unless it is your own or it is a really interesting case, most people are sleeping in journal clubs. Any part of medical college in India you are. So you are sleeping in journal clubs, suddenly your eyes opened up and you saw uh, optochiasmatic arachnoiditis being there, it stuck around. Otherwise, it is, uh, you know, atypical thing. Spasmus, Newton's triad. It's a, actually an old question, but not something you would be revising close to the exam. And ketogenic diet, tough question was there. IEM question, CMT question, uh, MRI brain interpretation. It was not photograph. I was told that there was a description of the MRI, diffusion weighted, and you had to make the difference. And then there were questions related to Bethlehem versus Thompson myotonia. So they were going into details. Type 1, type 2 uh, myotonic dystrophy, you had to make the differences. So these were atypical areas. Were there repeat questions? Yes, there were repeat questions. Five to seven direct and indirect repeats, mostly from the recent papers. Now, there was a question, if you remember, those who have given the exam, there was a question on cryoprecipitate is used in all of the following. It is a repeat question. I've also discussed in some of my videos. Don't worry, I'm not going to say everything from my notes. You're all smart people. Nobody can claim that. Even Nelson cannot say everything from Nelson, although Nelson had majority of topics. Secondly, there was a question on hydrops vitalis. So it was a repeat question. There was a question on ataxia telangiectasia. It was almost the same question. I would say verbatim repeat question from NEET SS exam. So I think 2019 it was asked. And there was a question on slapped cheek appearance. Again, easy one, but a repeat nonetheless. And there were about another three, four questions which were indirect repeat from the recent papers. So be thorough with the recent questions. And some takeaways in the end, uh, overall, as I said, NEET SS has more difficult questions in general pediatrics than INSS. Reverse is true for specialities. Secondly, INSS preparation is more focused and intensive. Ek vahi limited area mein, they will be asking question and they will go more and more deep into it. Even if there is a topic repeat, next time they may repeat a question, but if you have read the topic superficially, despite knowing the topic, you may not be able to answer it. So topics which are frequently asked in INSS go into the depths of those topics. Prognosis, for example, like prognosis of 10 common pediatric malignancies, you do them thoroughly. Don't remember the most important prognostic fact. See, Wilms tumor, most important is histology. Everyone knows. Even neat PG people also know. This knowledge is not going to solve the question. They will ask the finer details. Uh, Wilms tumor, neuroblastoma, and not only that, there was a question uh, related to bad prognosis and neural tube defects also. This is something most people don't read. It is mentioned in Nelson. So go into the details of high yielding topics. Less malnutrition was there, so our super speciality system is moving away from malnutrition. But doesn't mean that you don't read them. The day you stop reading it, you will have five questions coming from that. I don't know about your luck. My luck has always been like that. I assume and I leave something important, it always comes in the exam. So, but in general, yes, less malnutrition questions are being asked and more systems are being asked in both neat SS as well as INISS. And be thorough with biostats, basics of ventilation. This is for future people, those who are going to sit in the November exam. Biostats, basics of ventilation, recent health program and days, ABG, DK, Dengue, NRP, and the EMS protocols. Nelson is still the highest yielding book. A lot of people think, start thinking, sir, Nelson padha tha, but I could not get a very reasonable score. I was, I was not able to recall. Should I start reading some random other book? No, questions are still from Nelson and they are enough in number that in case you have read Nelson and you have revised it well and you have read in depth with accuracy, high accuracy, high recall value, you will still be able to get into the topmost ranks. Whether you get a topmost rank like rank 1, rank 2, rank 3 or it's slightly you know far away from that, it will all come down to your day. 
uh, what other resources did you use and some luck worked it with your way or not. But still Nelson based preparation is the key for any pediatric super speciality exam. And do not miss the past recalls, past topics. Now, a lot of students will ask, sir, past paper kahan se milenge? Before you ask me, uh, unfortunately, there are not very good books available for recalls. Uh, we have been working, I have been personally working on it for some time, but you know, getting the accurate recalls is very tricky. And you have only limited recalls, incomplete recalls. I frankly don't believe in making up or cooking up the question and putting it up. So unless that thing happens, at least listen to the recall videos which we regularly put. Also go through the topic list which I have told you. So you now know that ventilation graphs you are supposed to read. Neural to defect prognostic factors are being asked. Prognostic factor of all the major diseases, particularly oncology, they are being asked. So go through them thoroughly. And if you are a subscriber of Triplado Super Speciality, whatever things we have discussed, they are important ones only. In addition, we will be coming soon. We are in the process of finishing up pediatric neurology. After this, step two will be putting up some additional topics, some updates. The team, separate team is working on the QBank also. And last but not the least, something related to INISS. Purely for INISS, we will be coming out shortly. But keep the coaching thing on the side. Even if you are not a subscriber, it's absolutely fine. Read Nelson, focus on areas and increase your accuracy levels. Thank you very much. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder.